Chainsaws are predominantly used for chopping down trees, cutting up logs, or cleaning up landscaping. But that's not what they were originally intended for. Their original use is a lot more unsettling. Now, I'll warn you, while this is an important video, it will cause you to visualize some graphic imagery. So if you're a kid or you're watching this with a kid, or if you're just squeamish, I just wanted to warn you in advance, just so you know. To give you a hint, a large part of this video will involve the discussion about women giving birth and alternatives to C-sections. So with that out of the way, let's get into it. Chainsaws were invented to be used in childbirth. So when a woman is giving birth, there are many complications that could occur with the pregnancy. One of these complications is shoulder dystocia. This is when the baby's shoulders get caught behind the woman's pelvic bone and the baby can't be squeezed out. This is an emergency because this could lead to oxygen deprivation for the baby and the baby could very quickly develop brain damage or be killed. So this is an emergency that needs to be dealt with right away. And in the 18th and 19th century, the way that doctors dealt with this problem was with a procedure called symphysiotomy. Symphysiotomy involved the doctor using a scalpel-like instrument to try and cut through the ligaments and cartilage in the pelvis and often the pelvic bone itself to try and widen the woman's birthing canal to get the baby out. As you can imagine, this was a very challenging procedure for doctors and also a painful experience for the woman. Symphysiotomy was originally conceived as an alternative to the cesarean section because at the time c-sections were dangerous and painful because they didn't have effective anesthesia and the procedure was potentially fatal due to post-surgical complications like infection. So doctors conceived the process of symphysiotomy as an alternative to that, a potential healthier, more efficient alternative to that. Despite that, women who experience symphysiotomy often developed chronic pain, early onset arthritis, and incontinence, and the process was not a pleasant one. So the difficulty of the symphysiotomy procedure inspired two Scottish doctors, John Aitken and James Jeffrey, to invent the world's first chainsaw. Now, this wasn't a mechanical chainsaw. It's not what you picture when you think of a chainsaw. If you picture the, a chainsaw, like a modern day chainsaw, that chain part, take that off the chainsaw, that's basically what they invented. It was a chain of, of metal teeth attached to two teardrop handles and doctors would have to take off one of the handles, put a needle on, thread it behind the woman's pelvis, reattach the handle and then saw through the woman's pelvis to open it to get the baby out. That was the world's first chainsaw. This chainsaw later inspired Leonardo Gigli to make his own version of the Aitken and Jeffrey chainsaw. His was very similar. It just had a much thinner blade and T-shaped handles. This made it a lot more precise. And when symphysiotomy was outdated and stopped being practiced, the Gigli saw began to be used for amputations. And in fact, even in today's world where surgeons will use power tools, they will sometimes use the Gigli saw when they need very precise control over what they're cutting. I have no idea if I'm saying Gigli correctly. Let me know in the comments. <laughs> so Aitken and Jeffrey invented their chainsaw in the 1780s, but doctors found it challenging to use and the chainsaw didn't really take off spectacularly in the medical world until Bernard Hine in 1830 invented his version of the chainsaw, the osteotome. Basically, he took a chainsaw, a chain of, of metal teeth, and attached it to some gears in a hand crank and he made it much smaller and handheld and this invention was extremely popular. Despite being challenging to use, Hein himself being one of the only people to actually master using the, the tool, the osteotome was a hit and Hein himself became a bit of a minor celebrity. He won an award in France, he was invited to Russia to demonstrate his invention and despite the osteotome being extremely expensive, costing around $30,000 in today's money compared to conventional saws, which would have cost $500 in today's money. The invention was so popular because doctors loved that it was able to cut precisely and that it was handheld. Hein himself even tried to improve his invention by adding guards to the sides so that only a very precise part of the tool actually did some cutting, which improved its precision even more. Due to its popularity, companies worldwide began to make the osteotome. The osteotome was so successful that it inspired modern day chainsaws. When Samuel J. Benz saw the osteotome in 1905, he immediately invented a machine based on the osteotome that was able to cut down giant redwood trees. Now, this isn't very similar to modern day chainsaws because it was massive and required multiple people to use it, but it was the first mechanized chainsaw designed to cut down trees. The first portable chainsaw was invented by Canadian James Shand in 1918, and the first electrical and gas powered chainsaws were invented by Andreas Steele in the 1920s, but still they needed two people to operate it. A single person operated a chainsaw wouldn't be invented for decades later. 
Symphysiotomy was abandoned by most surgeons in the early 20th century because improvements to medical hygiene and anesthesia allowed for a resurgence of cesarean sections. It made cesarean sections much more safe and easy to recover from. And since the side effects, risks, and recovery time for C-sections is less than that of symphysiotomy, symphysiotomy just fell out of practice. But the story doesn't end there. Unfortunately, this story has a much sadder ending for at least 1,500 women from Ireland who had the symphysiotomy procedure done to them unknowingly and without their consent between the 1940s and the 1980s. So during that time, if there was a complication during childbirth, like shoulder dystocia, surgeons would elect to perform symphysiotomy without consent from the woman and without even telling her what they were about to do. The side effects of this procedure were not very nice. There was months and months of recovery time. And when the woman recovered, she would have chronic pain, early onset arthritis, difficulty walking, and constant incontinence. And one of the women who was subjected to this treatment, Rita McCann, spoke up and talked about how for six months after the procedure, she was unable to walk, she would crawl around, she, was, she had a newborn baby and she would crawl around with that baby. She didn't know what had happened to her, no one gave her any explanation, but she did remember during the procedure, she heard the doctor say to one of the medical students who was in the room watching, don't worry, in the morning when she has a healthy baby boy or girl, she'll forget all about this. But she didn't. Like many other women, she was left with chronic pain and a lifelong feeling of being misused and mistreated and not having any answers as to why that happened to her. So to this day, there's no explanation given as to why the doctors perform these procedures without consent and why they performed symphysiotomies instead of C-sections at a time that C-sections were safe and being done all over the world. Some critics suggest that it had to do with Ireland's very Catholic religious beliefs and society's general disregard for women's bodily autonomy. However, some doctors have argued that it had nothing to do with that and that at the time consent was different and that women consented once the operation started that the doctor would do anything necessary to save that baby's life. However, I'm not sure I buy that because that doesn't explain why they would be performing symphysiotomies instead of C-sections. Again, at a time where cesarean sections were much safer than symphysiotomies, had much better recovery times and were being performed all around the world. Now, thanks to campaigning and protesting from survivors of symphysiotomy and influence from the UN Human Rights Committee, the Irish government has offered to give payouts of 40,000 euros to 140,000 euros to these women. But without an explanation, many of them still feel unsatisfied. As Rita McCann said, I just want an apology and an explanation. The explanation should have been given to us before they ever put a knife to us. All right, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I had not intended to make this video. I had originally intended to just make a quick video about the origin of the chainsaw and how it started in medicine rather than in the lumber industry. But the more I learned about some physiotomy and the women who were exposed to it in Ireland against their will, I just had to make a longer video about this whole thing. All right, I hope you liked the video. If you did, please subscribe, like the video, share it with your friends. Let me know in the comments. But for now, I'll see you in the next one. And if you want to watch another video, click one of these videos around here somewhere and I'll see you in the next one. Stay curious. Bye.